Hey everybody, it's me again, Chicken Noobel, and I'm back with another festival overview. This time we're looking at the Super Adventure Festival, one of the coolest and most unique festivals I've ever seen in an MMORPG. In this video, we're going to be covering what makes this festival so unique, where you're going to go to participate, the activities you can play, what type of rewards you can earn, and finally, some big ticket achievements to chase after. Before I go into those details, sub to this channel if you haven't already, drop a like if you love Super Adventure Box, leave a comment if there's something you want to say about this video, or feel free to hit me up on social media. You can find me on Twitter or Facebook. Like I mentioned moments ago, the Super Adventure Festival is a really unique experience for an MMO. The festival is normally released around April Fools and as such is seen as the April Fools festival. During the festival duration, a brilliant Asura named Moto brings a super adventure box to the creator's common in Radasum for the Tyrians to enjoy, or so they can use it to punish themselves. Players who enter the super adventure box will be transported into a virtual world with a fun 8-bit aesthetic in a 3D environment with upbeat 8-bit tunes. You're actually entering a game within the game and you're going to find tons of references to beloved titles that many Many of you probably grew up with. Moto allegedly built the Super Adventure Box as a teaching tool for a Soren progeny to learn from, but really I think he's just looking to have a little bit of fun. Super Adventure Box can be enjoyed by both full and free-to-play accounts. The Magistan Waypoint is the closest to the festival, and it's located here on the world map, so full accounts can head there immediately after the starting mission or on an existing character. Free-to-play accounts have to wait until level 10 because you guys can't enter cities until that level, but you can still enjoy this event. Getting the level 10 happens pretty quickly. If you don't have a free-to-play account yet, you can use the sponsored referral link in the description below to make one. Using it's going to help my channel out, so thanks in advance to anybody who uses it. If you don't have the Magistan Waypoint on your character, the easiest way to get there is to teleport to the Sorin Draw Waypoint in Metrica Province. All full and free-to-play account characters, level 2 or above, will have that waypoint unlocked. When you go there, turn around and head through the portal. Again, if you're on a free-to-play account and you see a big red symbol on the portal, go level a little bit more or purchase the expansion bundle to remove these travel restrictions on your account. There's a referral link to the expansions in the description too. At some point, you might get an in-game mail that has a special item in it that teleports you to the festival. I don't know if this is on free-to-play accounts, and I don't know at what level you're going to receive that at, but keep an eye out for it because it is an option. When you first zone into the Super Adventure Box, you're going to be sitting on some clouds with a floating island in front of you. Welcome to The Hub, the central location for all the Super Adventure Box content. The Hub has a couple of vendors that I'm going to be covering in a bit, but the biggest draws to this location are going to be the race, the time-based adventures, and the Super Adventure Box dungeons. Buildings, with signs numbered 1 through 4, are located around the central fountain, and each building represents a portal to one of the dungeon worlds in Super Adventure Box. All of the things you do in the Super Adventure Box will award Bobbles or Bobble Bubbles. These are the two currencies for this festival, and the Bobble Bubble is just a condensed form of 250 Bobbles. Whether you're completing achievements, participating in the races, doing adventures in the hub, or running through the dungeons, you're going to be earning these Bobbles. Let's look at the Super Adventure Box dungeons first, or as they're most commonly referred to as worlds, since they're the most popular and rewarding content. The Super Adventure Box is designed to be a multi-world game, with each world having three zones, a final boss, and a bonus stage. At the time of making this video, we only have two worlds available, worlds 1 and 2, but the hub has buildings for worlds 3 and 4, so hopefully we see those at some point in the future. You can complete the Super Adventure Box zones by yourself or with friends, so party up with others if you want to share that experience. The zones are designed similarly to 3D action platformer games from the late 1990s or early 2000s, with the Guild Wars 2 jumping puzzle mechanics and frustration. Each zone has its own unique style and appearance, from green pastures to snowy mountain peaks, from alpine forests with waterfalls to dark forests with poisonous swamps and large mushrooms. Each zone has unique enemies and obstacles to overcome. Some levels you might be dealing with ninjas and icy surfaces, and in others you could be jumping from tree to tree while dealing with hostile monkeys. Similar to some early top-down action RPGs, zones can contain hidden surprises. You can use bombs to find hidden rooms, discover locked chests and open them with keys, dig for treasure with shovels, enter shops and smash the shopkeeper pots, find hidden shortcuts, and fight mini-bosses. In the shops, you're going to spend your baubles to purchase potions to regain hearts, keys, shovels, different weapons, bombs, candles, one-ups, increase your bobble carrying capacity, and more. 
The upgrades you unlock, the items and skills you have available, your endurance for dodging, your life count and bobble amount, all that stuff can be found at the bottom of the screen. Progress through the zones is going to work something like this. You zone in and start exploring the environment. You'll be fighting enemies with your stick or whatever weapons that you've unlocked for that character and you're going to be collecting bobbles as they drop. You're also going to want to explore the areas since there are dozens of bobbles hidden in each map. The bobbles you find in the zones will appear as floating balls with different color glows and each color represents a different denomination of bobble. Blue gives one bobble, green gives five bobbles, orange will give 10, red will give 20, and purple is going to give you a whopping 50 bobbles. As you continue your journey, purchase upgrades whenever you can afford them at the different shops. Moving through the zone, you'll encounter checkpoints. They look like pipe organs with five organ keys in the ground, and there's going to be one key illuminated for each person in your party. To drop the organ pipes and move forward, someone will have to stand on each illuminated key. Since standing on the keys will play notes, oftentimes you'll see everybody just jumping around in hopes they all hit the keys in unison. Checkpoints are where you're going to respawn if you die. Eventually, you'll reach the zone boss. Zones 1 and 2 for each world is going to have a player avoiding attacks from a boss while trying to free villagers from a cage, but Zone 3 has a proper boss fight with mechanics that you're going to need to learn. Each zone leads into the next, and Zone 3 leads into a bonus event, which then sends the player back to the hub. Now, one important caveat. Your character progress within the Super Adventure Box dungeons are not shared on your account. The upgrades and zone progress on character A is going to have to be repeated on character B. The bobbles and bobble bubbles, those are shareable though, so whatever you have in your bank or shared inventory can be accessible by all of your characters. There are three different difficulties of the Super Adventure Box, and you and your party will have the chance to choose which difficulties you want when you enter the house. Normal mode is plain old normal, there's some challenge and decent rewards. Everything I've described up to this point has been about normal mode, and you get to this mode by talking to the villager. But let's say you're not good at jumping puzzles in Guild Wars 2, or you just want to clear out some achievements quickly. You can play the infantile mode of Super Adventure Box by speaking to this happy cloud. This mode is going to place happy clouds around all the levels, and these happy clouds are going to build rainbow bridges so you can pass obstacles more easily. Enemies are also going to drop food so you're less likely to die, but there's also far fewer bobbles to discover in each zone. The rewards for clearing the zones are also less impressive. We're talking low risk and low reward. But you're a pro gamer, right? You like the challenge, and you look at the Super Adventure Box and you think, Psh, that looks too easy. Well, my friend, you should spend some time in Tribulation Mode by speaking to the sad cloud. Tribulation mode is for the people who like unfair challenges. This mode has hidden pitfalls, clouds that'll block your jumps and make you fall to your death, spikes that'll instantly kill you, flowers that explode, spikes that shoot up from the ground when you walk over them, and a lot of other things that are going to keep you from finishing the zones. Everything will kill you. Over, and over, and over, and over, and over again some more. This mode is not for the faint of heart. This is where the god gamers play to get those tribulation mode achievements completed, get the better than normal rewards for completing the zones, and get the items needed for the King Toad and Storm Wizard weapon skins. If you're new to Guild Wars 2 jumping puzzles, the Super Adventure Box, or you're just pushing your skill level by playing normal or tribulation modes, then you're probably going to die a lot and there's no shame in that. When you lose all of your lives, you'll end up in the game over room, and using a continue coin will return you to life with 5 extra lives. You can find continue coins whenever you clear a zone in the Super Adventure Box, or you can buy them for 10 baubles each from the Super Adventure Box traders outside of the dungeons, or for 50 baubles, you can buy one from Moto in the game over room. If you have some coins in your inventory, you don't have to purchase any more, you can simply use the one that you have to come back to life with the 5 extra lives. During the festival, you'll likely be able to find an item in the gem store called the Infinite Continue Coin. You'll get unlimited plays in the Super Adventure Box without spending baubles on Continue Coins, something that's probably a necessity if you want to beat Tribulation Mode without a guide. Let's move on to Adventures. Adventures in Guild Wars 2 are time trials around various maps that have daily and lifetime leaderboards so you can prove to your friends and guildmates how much better you are. They also have different levels of prizes based on how fast you can complete the adventure. For this festival, you're going to be racing against the clock to collect coins scattered around the different maps. When the adventure starts, look for all the coin markers. You're going to be able to see them through the walls and they're going to mark the coins clear across the zone, so this is at least going to give you some direction. There is also another adventure in the hub, and that's going to require you to collect 50 coins. And it's the same idea. Look for markers around the hub and head off in that direction. 
If you ever want to channel your inner speedrunner with one of these seven adventures, you can look for Gordon the Racing Choya and his flagpole near the spawn point for each zone, or at the back of the hub. And speaking of speedrunning, at the back of the hub you'll find a shoe-wearing hedgehog who wants you to race. Every 20 minutes a blue rectangle will appear on the ground and standing in it will let you enter a race against other players. When the race starts you're going to run around the map tagging checkpoints along the way. You'll jump to the tops of the mountains, you'll descend into the depths of the island, and you're going to fly in the sky as a bumblebee. This race doesn't have a leaderboard, but if you come in first, second, or third place, your name will appear on the screen so everyone will see how awesome you are. Like I mentioned much earlier, completing adventures and races will give you baubles. Let's talk about the rewards and vendors. Outside of the Super Adventure Box in Radisum, and located near the gate of the hub, there's going to be three vendors. The Super Adventure Box Trader, the Weapon Smith, and the Weekly Trader. The baubles and bobble bubbles that you collected could be spent here for various rewards. The Trader has several backpack covers, several miniatures, Super Boom Boxes that will play Super Adventure Box music outside of the festival, a couple consumables that will give you positive effects, and a home instance node for gathering baubles. There's also some obsidian shards here if you need those for legendaries. The trader also does conversions of baubles to bobble bubbles, or from bobble bubbles to baubles. He also sells continue coins for a much lower price than Moto, as well as some fancy furniture coins that are used for buying Guildhall decorations. His third tab lets you trade other coins for baubles. So like, let's say you have the infinite continue coin like me, then you can take your normal continue coins and convert them to baubles. The weekly trader has mystic coins for the mystic forge, Tyrian exchange vouchers if you need dungeon currency, transmutation charges if you enjoy fashion wars, and some amalgamated gemstones and chests of legendary shards useful for your high-end crafting needs. And the last guy, the weaponsmith, he has some super weapon skins that you can purchase for 1 gold and 35 baubles. He'll also sell you a glitched weapon box, but it's rather expensive. You can use your Crimson Assassin tokens to buy Crimson Assassin weapon skins, or buy Moto's weapon designs, which when combined with some zone boss tokens will create weapon skins of different colors. Finally, there are five different achievement categories for this festival. The Daily Super Adventure Festival is located under the Daily category. And then the Super Adventure Box World 1, World 2, Tribulation Mode, and Nostalgia subcategories are located under the Festival category. For new players, I'm going to put instructions on screen so you can find the achievement window. Let's start with the Nostalgia, since that has the larger annual achievements. In here, you're going to find achievements for completing each world in each difficulty. These are the warm-up, classic, and challenge achievements. There's also Flight of the Bumble Pug achievement. Now, those seven achievements are important because one of the biggest achievements is the Super Adventure Box Nostalgia achievement, and it requires you to complete four of those seven. The easiest will probably be the warm-up and classic achievements for each world. Once you complete that, you're going to be given 50 achievement points for annual nostalgia, as well as a virtual box, which will award a helmet that spawns holographic versions of Super Adventure Box creatures as you run around, as well as spawning baubles. But those baubles don't actually count for your currency, it's just showing up for fun. Course Load is another nostalgia achievement, and it's going to award you with 20 achievement points and a Super Adventure Weapon Box. To complete Course Load, you'll need to do your daily coursework 8 times. Finishing the smaller achievements will give you baubles, and doing your daily coursework will give you a box of Super Adventure Box goods. In there, you're going to find some Crimson Assassin tokens, Furniture tokens, Continue coins, and baubles. To do the daily coursework, go to the Daily Super Adventure Festival subcategory under Daily. There, you're going to see six achievements. Five are objectives to complete each day, and then there's the daily coursework. To finish coursework, you just need to do three of those five achievements. Do that eight times, and you'll finish the achievement that I mentioned seconds ago. Lastly, you have the World 1, World 2, and Tribulation Mode subcategories under Festivals. These are world-specific achievements that you can achieve while you play. Collecting all the baubles, finding all the hidden rooms, getting gold in the adventures, getting all the upgrades, and discovering furniture shops. Those are pretty typical of the achievements that you're going to find in the World 1 and World 2 subcategories. Then, there are zone-specific achievements, like the Tiptoe achievement, which says Complete World 2, Zone 1, without angering any hillbillies. Completing these achievements will award various amounts of achievement points, and then if you complete all the achievements in these subcategories, you're going to get some backpack covers, larger amounts of achievement points, and titles proving your jumping puzzle skills. The Tribulation Mode achievements are awarded for completing the worlds, visiting the shops, and for destroying all of a specific object in each world. Tribulation Mode achievements just award large amounts of achievement points. There's no items to earn there.
Anyways, I hope this gives you all an overview about what you're going to find in the Super Adventure Festival. The festival is a light-hearted and troll-heavy one, and I find it to be pretty enjoyable even though I've taken some long breaks from it in past years. The aesthetic, the overwhelming amount of references to other video games from decades past, the music and the sound effects, there's a lot of charm in this festival. It's definitely worth checking out, and I'm sure you're going to smile when you see something and be like, oh, I know where that's from, I get that reference. So log in and give it a try, and if you need an account, please visit the description for the referral links. I don't think you guys are going to be disappointed with this festival, and I hope you all have a lot of fun with it. Thanks for watching everyone, and until next time.